Last year took our planet's climate into uncharted territory. 2024's temperatures were higher than anything we've seen before. And this isn't just about breaking records, this meant devastation for the human and natural worlds. So as a new year begins, scientists are already trying to peer into the future and unpick what could be in store for us in 2025. I'm Adam, a climate scientist with a PhD from Oxford, sharing what you need to know about climate change. And today I want to talk about whether this year could be one of the hottest we've ever recorded, and maybe even THE hottest. For those of you with short attention spans, the answers to those questions are almost certainly and probably not, respectively. But for those of you with slightly longer attention spans, let's talk about why we know what we know when the year has only just begun, and why global temperatures actually matter in the first place. And to understand and why global temperatures actually matter, we don't exactly have to look back far into the past. The planet was extremely hot in 2024. It shattered the previous record, which was set all the way back in in the previous year, 2023. To be clear, these were the two hottest years since our records began, so over the past century and a half or so. But by piecing together what our planet's been up to over the distant past, climate scientists also reckon 2024 was likely the hottest year since before the last ice age. So that'd mean it's been over a hundred thousand years since the world's been this hot. 2024 was also the first year as a whole where global warming passed 1.5 degrees Celsius. 1.5 is the limit the world has set itself to try to save the most vulnerable people and ecosystems. Now one single year over the limit does not mean we've passed the limit yet, but it's obvious that we're incredibly close and that definitely sucks. Now I've had loads of comments asking me about exactly this. Wait, surely we've already passed 1.5 degrees? What does this limit even mean? Does this mean that global heating is out of control? And just to answer that last question first, thankfully all the evidence indicates that stopping emitting will still stop the heating. But I'm planning to discuss all this in far more depth in my next video, which is going to be all about where we stand with the 1.5 limit today. Subscribe so you don't miss it, and while you're clicking on things, a like and a comment would be pretty good too. But why does global average temperature actually matter? What does this temperature even mean? Well, it means a lot, because these global numbers have very real consequences on our local human lives. This has come in the form of extreme weather disasters, like the downpour in eastern Spain in October that killed hundreds, or the heat wave in Mecca in June that claimed over 1,000 lives. Across the world, humans faced an average of six extra weeks of dangerous heat thanks to climate change. As World Weather Attribution explains, the countries that experience the highest number of dangerous heat days are overwhelmingly small island and developing states, who are highly vulnerable and considered to be on the front lines of climate change. So again, we see how climate change hits the people who have done the least to cause the problem, the hardest. And across the planet, high temperatures have combined with droughts to hit farming and create fuel for wildfires. So to sum up, 2024 was bad for the climate, which means it was bad for us. So the obvious question is, will 2025 be even worse? Which begs another obvious question. How can we even begin to answer that first question? While climate scientists don't have some magic crystal ball that allows us to peer into the future, but we do have physics. Researchers can piece together the different things that are pushing today's climate out of balance. That's how we were able to, correctly, predict that 2023 and 2024 would be potential record breakers. And long-term climates of the channel will remember me talking about exactly that in similarly titled videos over the last two years. 
By the way, if you appreciate that I predicted the future and did it without selling you all rubbish you don't need through sponsorship or monetization, well, that's all thanks to incredible patrons like John, whose support keep this channel ticking over. You can join the Patreon team up here. Here. Okay, but here's the essential science of how we're able to forecast the planet's temperature at the start of the year. The biggest factor pushing our planet's temperature off balance is, surprise surprise, human emissions. That means all the carbon dioxide and other greenhouse gases, plus the air pollution we're pumping into that atmosphere. So as time goes on and we pump more of those out, the hotter the planet gets. So then it might sound like that answer's obvious. We've pumped out more of those emissions, so surely 2025 will be hotter than 2024. But humans aren't the only thing affecting the climate, because we also have to talk about the El Nino oscillation. This is a crucial fluctuation in Earth's oceans where in some years the Pacific surface is hotter than usual and in some years cooler. The warm periods are called El Nino and the cool periods are called La Nina, which translate as little boy and little girl, which, well, it definitely sounds less weird in Spanish. Anyway, climate scientists are predicting that 2025 will be moving towards the La Nina cooler phase, while the last two years have been dominated by the El Nino warmer phase. And all of that together means that 2025's temperature will probably not be a record breaker. But the UK's Met Office is still predicting 2025 will be one of the three hottest years since records began, which frankly is bonkers. That this will likely be one of the hottest years despite our oceans moving towards their cool phase, well it just shows how extremely fossil fuels have already heated the planet. And again, this is going to have profound impacts on our lives. Whether it's affecting our ability to grow food and access water, or creating more intense and more common extreme weather disasters. And actually I said it's going to, but that's probably the wrong tense. Right now, as I record this, Los Angeles is being threatened by three separate wildfires that are raging across the city, and tens of thousands have been forced to evacuate their homes. So we know that 2025 will be an intense year for the climate, an intense year for us. But it's important we also talk about what we don't know, because researchers estimate what could happen based on the evidence that we have today. So disclaimers, we don't know with certainty what will happen. There's a range on the estimated temperature of 2025. And of course something could happen in 2025 that we just don't know about yet. For example, a huge climate altering volcano could go off. And while we're talking about unknown things, I have to come clean about something. You see, I mentioned that climate scientists correctly predicted that 2023 and 2024 would be potential record breakers. But that doesn't mean we got everything right. Because these years weren't just hot like we expected, they were even hotter than we expected. And that's something that climate scientists are working hard to understand. Whether it's just some temporary blip to do with changes in pollution, or even a shift in how the climate itself is operating. It could even be some mix of all of the above. Understanding this is incredibly important, and so one of my priorities for this year will be making a video about what we know so far, what we don't know so far, and what climate scientists are doing to solve this puzzle in real time. But in the meantime, here's how I actually felt about the climate dumpster fire of 2024, as well as my hopes for what we can do differently this year. Okay, until next time. Bye. What an unnecessary shot.